I am just a girl from the ghetto who loves to garden. And you know what? I'm pretty damn good at it. So, hey guys, it's your girl Kiki Soto here. Welcome back to Urban Girl Gardening. What's up? I am your girl Kiki Soto and welcome back to my channel here, Urban Girl Gardening. Today will be a continuation of our seed organization and um, starting schedule for our 2021 growing season. So last time uh, we talked about this on part one, we discussed our peppers, tomatoes, eggplants. We talked about um, cucumbers. What else did we discuss? Um, melons and we also discussed our melons and yeah so what I was telling you guys um, the veggies that take a long time to produce um, even though they seem to grow quickly the ones that take a long time to germinate and produce actually like the tomatoes and the peppers um, and the eggplants we really want to get those started 8 to 12 weeks before your last frost date now I am in zone 5b upstate New York and we have about 150 to 155 day growing season so in that time I want to be able to harvest as much as possible so when I am starting my peppers eggplants tomatoes um, I am starting in beginning to mid-February we already discussed that um, we talked about cucumbers most cucumbers you can just wait until after your first frost date and put those right in the ground or you can start them but I wouldn't start them any earlier than four weeks indoors um, what else same thing with the melons if you can wait if you have a long enough season because most melon varieties can take 80 to 100 days if you have a long enough season go ahead and wait and put those seeds in the ground when it's warm enough outside or you can start them indoors, but I would not start them any sooner than four weeks before. We also discussed lettuce. Um, lettuce, I would start indoors only because they will be going into the heat. So, um, yeah, I would start the lettuce indoors about four weeks before your last, um, your last frost date. There are some varieties of lettuce which we discussed before, um, like your Cimarron. Um, let me look at my paper. Yeah, I know I got my notes, right? Um, we discussed quite a few varieties that were heat tolerant. Your green salad bowl. Um, I said the Cimarron, your butter crunch. There are some lettuces that will do okay in some heat, but you don't want them out in the, the dead of, you know, of the summer when it's the hottest. Unless, unless you want them to go to seed, which is fine. You collect your seeds, save them. I totally support that. We want to save seeds. It's a good, good habit um, to get into. Okay, so, um, yeah, today we're going to be discussing... Our root veggies, we're going to talk about beans and peas, and we are also going to talk about brassicas. Now, I just want to let you guys know, this is the way that I, I do things, and they work for me. These are the things that work for me. Um, there are other channels that will be more technical, um, they will give you the science behind why and how you should do everything, and that's fine. Um, we can do that too, but listen, I am just a girl from the ghetto who loves to garden, 
And you know what? I'm pretty damn good at it. So if you're here, you know, to learn and grow, then you are in the right place. And I end every one of my videos by saying, learn with me, grow with me. We're gonna learn together, okay? And we're gonna grow together. Everybody has their own gardening style and I'm just showing you guys how I do my thing, all right? Okay, so let's start with the brassicas. Now, your brassicas take a pretty long time to, um, to mature. About 60, 60, some, time, some longer, 60 days to 75 days, depending on what you're growing. Now, you can grow your brassicas into the summer, but you want to start them early. You want to start them, again, 8 to 12 weeks before your last frost date. And it's a safe bet to do so because if you get them out early enough, we all know our brassicas will do well in the cool weather. So if you do get a little bit of frost on them, you know, if they get a little big to be indoors and you have to put them out or you get a little chill, a little cold, unexpected cold night, those will be fine. Now, the only issue is if you don't get them out in time, um, they will go to seed or flower before maturity. And that's because of the heat. So it's a, it's a, there's a little window there, you know, you really have to work out the timing. Um, I will start some of my brassicas in the sum, the spring to summer season, but I prefer to grow them in the fall, which is a whole nother topic that we'll do a whole nother video on later on. Um, but yeah, they grow well. They grow slower, but they grow well into the fall season. So I'll be growing broccoli. Um, I have, what's what I have here? I have purple sprouting broccoli, um, cauliflower. Um, what else? I have a bunch of kales. I think we talked about the kales last time when we were talking about the lettuces. Yeah, we did. And um, yeah, you can also do your Asian greens. You can actually do the Asian greens a little earlier because again, they don't mind the cool weather. So if you start your, let's say your pak choy, um, your kohlrabi, your bok choy, your tatsoi, your spinaches, you can start those earlier um, and even get them out. My expected for us date is May 9th, I believe, May 4th, May 9th, somewhere in there. So if I start my root veggies, not my root veggies, <clears throat> if I start my greens, um, my spinach, my kale, uh, what else? My Asian greens, like I was telling you about, the pak choy and the bok choy and the tatsoys and all of those. If I start those for about four weeks early, and I put them out, you know, if they have a good root system developed, they're already starting to flourish, they'll be fine if a little cold swings on by later on. Okay, so simple enough, right? Simple enough. Now, let's talk about beans. Okay, so you have your bush beans and you have your pole beans. I would usually start my beans inside and I would direct sow as well. So we all know that when you grow beans, they're going to produce, you're going to get your beans, but they're going to burn out. <laughs> they'll give you a few weeks of, of great harvest, great harvest, but then they'll start to dwindle out. So I would start my beans, my first succession, I would start them uh, four weeks before my last frost date. Then, after I put those beans into the ground, I would save some room and I would direct sow some seeds as well. So by the time the beans that I transplanted, by the time they're getting ready to burn out from producing, 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 I got a whole new slew of beans coming back to produce. We have to remember succession planting is very important if you plan on saving seeds because you can let those older beans um those other those older plants you can let them continue to dry out grow and dry out and just leave them 
and pick your beans for seed harvest. Um, yeah, and then if you're saving, freezing, you'll constantly have more and more to put away. Because the point of us growing is to become sufficient. And, you know, we take pride in what we're growing. So let's save it. Let's save it and nourish our families for the long haul. Save you some money, get you some seeds so you don't have to purchase them anymore. Succession planning is very important. Let's get a constant harvest going. Okay? And then you have your bush beans that don't need trellising. But I do use a... I should have brought one in here, but I'm not getting up, y'all. I do use a tall metal stake that has a hoop around. So I just take the main stalk and hook it in there because I don't want the leaves right right on the ground because then it'll be susceptible to bacteria and um, plant diseases, and we don't want any of that. So I do take a little stake, and I'll show you guys when we get into actually planting, which I can't wait. I'll show you guys. Um, yeah, but that's to hold them up. And then you have your pole beans, which will vine up and you're going to have to trellis some way. And that goes for your peas as well. You have your sugar snap peas, which is one of my favorites. Um, I would start those, okay, first let me say, most people will tell you not to start your sugar snap peas indoors. I do, it works for me, that's just what I do. But just like with the beans, the first round I start indoors and then I transplant them no sooner than four weeks before I'm sure I'm going to transplant those beans, those um, peas, okay? And then while I'm putting my transplants into the ground or container or wh wherever I'm gonna put them, raised bed, I'm going to take some seeds and I'm gonna plant those also because just like your bean plants, your peas will burn out as well. They're gonna produce, 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 and produce great for a couple of weeks and then that's it, okay? And again, super, super, super easy to save those seeds. You just let them grow, let them dry out on the vine, and you're good to go. So yeah, the sugar snap peas, those are vining. Um, your shelling peas, like leek and pea. I, I don't really grow shelling peas, but I, I figured I'd give it a try this year because it's just a lot of work. But we do love peas in my house. My kids have always loved peas. So I'm going to try these because they say that high yields and they're compact bushes. They only grow up to three feet. Perfect. Perfect for me. Not much for me to worry about. And that's very similar to my... Um, bush bean varieties, my green beans, my yellow beans, my purple beans. Um, and then you have your rattlesnake beans. Now those beans love to heat, but they vine, they vine like crazy. Um, I'll be growing those too. One or two plants will give you a lot. Um, and they will grow and grow like, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten feet. So make sure if you are growing um, those rattlesnake beans, you got a good trellis, okay? Let's see, what else can we talk about here? Um, potatoes, potatoes. Last year, if you go back, it's one of my very first videos that I posted, I grew potatoes in grow bags. I grew red potatoes and um, white potatoes. The white potatoes did not do good at all. When I dumped out that bag, it was full of potato bugs. Full of, I mean, even the even the seed potatoes that I put in were no longer there. They they just they didn't do good. Um, the red potatoes actually did really well, but I did not leave them long enough. I say this all the time. I'm not a patient person. I'm not a patient person, and you know the <laughs> they were sprouting and they were growing and they were flowering, and I was like, oof. I just got to get in there. I just got to get in there. But I, I did get a good amount of potatoes, just not as big as I wanted. So for your like your small varieties, like your baby potatoes, your fingerlings, you want to give them at least 80 days. You want to put them in um, well-draining soil because anything that's growing down, they need space to grow and they need to grow in comfort, meaning they need a soil that won't compact them and restrict them from spreading. 
um, your larger varieties like your your Yukon Golds and um, your other large potato varieties, you want to give them at least 100 days in, again, well-draining soil. Same for your sweet potatoes. 100 days or three to four months. Did I do that last time? Go watch the video and you'll find out. <laughs> no, I did not do that last time. I did get sweet potatoes. They just weren't as big as I wanted them to be. But again, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on myself this year. I'm going to work on my patience. And I'm just going to keep myself busy with everything else. And I'm not even going to look at those grow bags again. But I do suggest if you are container gardening, I think grow bags are amazing. Amazing to use. And I think you'll have great success with them. Okay. And they're really, really inexpensive. Like, um, I think I got a five or six pack of grow bags on Amazon for like 25 bucks. And they were 10 gallon bags. So, yeah, super easy. And let's see, what else? Carrots. Carrots, carrots, carrots. Whew. I love carrots. I love to grow them. I'm looking forward to some of the new varieties that I'll be growing. Like these um, Black Nebula carrots. I, I can't wait to try these. I actually still have carrots growing in the snow right now in my garden. I pulled a couple yesterday and they were delicious after they unfroze, <laughs> and they, they were really good. So, um, yeah, your carrots, you can grow those in containers, you can grow those um, straight in the ground. If your soil is loose, I suggest that you mix in, if you're using gardening soil, that you mix in some kind of sand, um, maybe some vermiculite, something to lighten up, kind of aerate the soil so that your potatoes have room to grow. They're not restricted in their growth because your potatoes are roots and the roots need to grow down, right? And they need to be able to do that without being restricted. Otherwise, you'll get really short, short carrots or stumpy carrots if you get any. You might just get greens if they don't have an, um, enough room or, I'm sorry, if they're not too restricted in growth. Let's see. So your smaller varieties like your Nance and your, your Chantenay, they'll take about 65 to 75 days. This is another veggie that you can absolutely succession plant so that, let's see, I have 100 and let's just say 53 days in my growing season. I'll probably start carrots. I'll probably start them in April because they're fine in the cool weather. Same, your potatoes, you can start them in April as well if you're in zone 5B, as long as there's no chance of a hard frost. Um, I would start them in April, and then I would start them again in May or June, and I'll probably do another batch in July, late July, um, just so that I'm continually getting my carrot harvest. Let's see, uh, radishes. Radishes are super easy. Um, depending on, I'm sorry, I'm looking down because I'm looking at my notes. So depending on a variety, let's see, the French breakfast, they didn't take long at all. They actually took about three, three and a half weeks. So those actually like the cool weather as well. They do not like the heat. So if you're going to grow radishes, I suggest you start growing them. Um, if you're in a cooler zone, it's fine to start growing them in, let's say, April, again in May. I don't suggest growing them in June, July, maybe the end of August into fall. Um, yeah, the French breakfast, they actually took about 20, about 25 days. And then you have your larger varieties, um, like your, your daikons and there's there's even larger varieties of radishes. Those will take more on the two month side, about 10 weeks. So if you're going to start those, I would start them early as well, like April, um, so that they're growing as the season is heating up, not in the intense, intense heat of the season. And then I would start them again um, in the July, mid August, so that they're growing into the fall. But again, you got to remember that if you're growing into the fall, which we're not there yet, but if you start, if you decide to grow into the fall, you just have to remember that they're going to take a little longer. So again, it's the window. You got to play with it. But I mean, it's gardening. So we're experimenting, right? If you're not experimenting in gardening, you won't know what works for you. And 
there's people that say don't transplant carrots, don't transplant beets, um, don't transplant a lot of your root vegetables, but they will grow just fine if you do. So if you do them properly, I've transplanted carrots and they've grown just fine. I've transplanted radishes and they've grown just fine. Take it as a challenge and do what you will. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's it for now. That's it for part two. And I showed you guys before how I organize. I got some of my seeds in here. Um, I also have some of my seeds in these little art boxes here. I'll show you guys real quick. These are for like when I open like the bags real stupid, like the little seed packets, I open them real stupid and they start to spill or something like that. I just throw them in here. Make sure you guys can see. Got my corn and I got some of my herbs in here, real simple. Um, and then when I do that, when I transfer them into here, I keep my packets in this little chunk here, just as a reference, you know, just to make sure that I'm just, just to check myself. Okay. Just to check myself and make sure that I'm, I'm doing things right because I never claim to be an expert. Like I said, I just do what works for me. I happen to be good at it. I happen to be, I have those green thumbs and uh, you know, I'm, I'm having fun and we all need a little bit of fun and sunshine and uh, growing. So make sure you guys, when you're growing, you're saving your seeds. Um, if you are, if you do have the intention of saving seeds, Make sure that you allot the space for it. Um, if you plan on growing quite a few things throughout the summer, make sure that you have the space to continue to grow and leave one or two plants to go to seed. So that's also something to think about. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think that's all for now. We'll touch back um, on part three when we talk about our herbs and our flowers. And thank you guys so much for listening to me talk for 20 minutes. <laughs> I appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you comment and share. If you guys have anything that you want to let me know that you want to talk to me about, feel free to leave your comments. Learn with me. We're learning together. Grow with me. We're growing together. All right, guys, this, this is how, this is how we take care of each other in the gardening community because none of us know it all. So, and it's always, always more that can be taught and more that can be learned so follow me on instagram at urban girl gardening you can come over to facebook and join my group we'd love to have you it's it's small but it's growing kind of like my youtube channel <laughs> urban girl gardening um if you have any questions if you want to chat you need a little inspiration you need um a little push to get started feel free to email me at theurbangirlgardening at gmail.com. That's T-H-E-E, -E, urbangirlgardening at gmail.com. Okay, guys? So we're getting started. We're getting started. We're getting started soon. It's January, February. We'll be touching that soil. We'll be touching that soil, getting our stuff started. I'm going to show, I'm going to show you guys my grow setup. You're going to see me build it and how I put it together. We've got a lot of good things coming, so... Thank you guys for being here. And yeah, let's do this. It's almost time, guys. Bye.